Okay, this is section 8.1, quadratic equations. Some of this will be a good amount of review for you, which will be a nice little break or change of pace. The general form of a quadratic equation is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the x squared is what makes it a quadratic, so obviously a can't be 0. If a was 0, this term would be gone and we'd be left with a linear equation. So, for our first example, if we have x squared equals 25, then we know we can undo squaring something by square rooting both sides. So we can square root both sides, and we get x equals 5. But part of the problem is, and some of you might recognize this, this isn't always giving us all of our solutions. So if from the original we would have moved the 25 over and subtracted it and got it set equal to 0, then we could factor this as difference of squares. Set each set of parentheses equal to 0, and you have x equals 5 and negative 5. So for here, when you go back to the original one, you have x equals 5, but we missed the negative 5. So some of you do recall that when you square root something, our answer is plus or minus. So you can write plus or minus 5 or 5 and negative 5, and both will be accepted correctly. So if we, oh, before we move on to number 2, I want to talk about the principle of square roots. which says if x squared equals some number k, then, just like we said before, you can square root both sides. x equals square root of k or x equals negative square root of k. And that second part is the really important solution that most students will forget. So let's try number two. 3x squared equals 6. First thing we have to do is get it to where x squared is by itself. So in order to do that, we're multiplying 3 times x squared, so we have to divide both sides by 3. So we get x squared equals 2. And the principle of square roots then says I can square root both sides as long as I recall that my solution will be plus or minus square root of 2. And that's a perfectly acceptable answer to leave like that. I don't want the decimals. I'd rather have the radicals. It's more exact. Number three, negative 5x squared plus 2 equals 0. So we'll subtract the 2 over and then divide by negative 5. Go ahead and pause it. Take a minute and give this problem a try. So we get negative 5x squared equals negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 5 and we get x squared equals positive 2 fifths. We are square rooting both sides, and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 2 fifths. Now, as we know, we can't leave a, ra a fraction under a radical because technically that is like having a radical in the denominator because you can take the square root of 2 over the square root of 5. So we always have to rationalize our solutions where we multiply by square root of 5 over square root of 5. And we get square root of 2 times square root of 5 is square root of 10 over square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. And don't forget your plus or minus out in the front. 4x squared plus 9 equals 0. Again, pause it. Take a moment to give this problem a try. We get 4x squared equals negative 9. x squared equals negative 9 fourths. Everyone should have gotten there perfectly fine. When we square root both sides, we have x equals the square root of negative 9 over the square root of 4, right? And with our plus or minus out in the front. Now, however you want to break that up, we know square root of 9 is 3 and square root of 4 is 2, but what about the negative? Well, that's what we have to decide. That square root of a negative is i. So plus or minus 3 halves i is our solution. 
here we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 2. Now, most of you would think we need to move this over, and in later sections we'll talk about using the quadratic formula, and we set them equal to 0 in order to factor. Um, but here, if you could recognize, that is a perfect square tri trinomial, which means you can square root the front, Square root of x squared is x and x. And what are multiples of 9 that add up to 6? And that's 3 and 3. So you have a positive 3 and a positive 3. And which is the quantity x plus 3 squared equals 2. Now you have something squared, so we can undo that. We have plus or minus square root of 2 over here equals x plus 3. So take a moment and get that copied. And then last step here, we have to subtract the 3 over. So we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 2. Or you could also say plus or minus square root of 2 minus 3. That's acceptable as well. All right. Uh, one formula that you may have seen before is the compound interest formula. And that is when A equals P times 1 plus R all to the T power. Where A is our amount, P, our final amount we should say. P is our principal, that's what it stands for, amount. You might want to write initial amount in parentheses. T is time, and it's usually in years, but otherwise it would specify. And R is the interest rate. So, the problem that we're going to do is Katie invested... $4,000 at interest rate R and it was compounded annually. Now this formula, they're all compounded annually and maybe you'll recall um, in the past you have seen when they're compounded different amount of times per year. Compounded just means how many times is that interest calculated and added to the account? So this, at say every January 1st, the interest will be calculated and added to the account of what they earned. Most savings accounts are um, compounded monthly right now, but big accounts with lots of money are often compounded annually. In two years, it grew to $4,410 what's the rate? Well, we have to write down our formula. So go ahead and take a minute and plug in what you think goes where. Please pause it to do that. So our final amount is the amount it ended with was 4410. P is the principal amount with what it started with is 4000 times 1 plus r, we don't know, to the 2 years. So the first thing we need to do, order of operations, say there's multiplying out here, we have to undo this before we can use our exponent. And we don't want to FOIL this out, that would make extra work. You'd still get the same answer, but we want to use the principle of square roots, which is square rooting both sides. So we divide both sides by 4,000 and we get 441 over 400 equals 1 plus r quantity squared. And now that you're squaring, you can just undo that and square root both sides. And we have 1 plus r equals plus or minus the square root of 441 over 400. And now we can just subtract the 1 over. So I'm just going to move that right there. And now it's gone. 
So our rate is negative 1 plus square root, plus or minus square root of 441 over 400. And you can go ahead and plug that into the calculator and you'll get r equals either 1 20th or negative 41 20th. So we're talking about an interest rate for growth here. So obviously one of these solutions doesn't make sense and that is this solution. So 1 20th and in rates um, we want our answer in percents which is 0.05 or 5%. And that's the final answer. That's the rate of, we always talk about rate in terms of percent. Okay, so I would try a compound interest formula on your own if you'd like. I think it would be good practice. Um, the other part of this section of notes is a method called completing the square. Another method to solve quadratics. And so what I want you to do is I want you to write down these steps and I'm going to teach you how to do it. So here's six steps. Write it down, maybe look at a problem if you'd like. Um, but this is what we're going to go over in class along with doing a lab on Wednesday, Thursday.